I know how difficult this must be for you. Do you? Military intelligence must know what happened, what went wrong, taking down leads. You're just one of many. How did the enemy know exactly where and exactly what time the raid was to take place? Do you believe I'm a spy or something? Certainly not. But how can I believe this? It's the truth. I'm not a mental case, you know. It happened just as I said it happened. It was not an hallucination. <laughs> Hallucination. The perception of objects which have no reality, usually arising from disorders of the nervous system. Well, perhaps. But three of England's finest neurologists examined Emily McDougall all that summer of 1943 and found her nervous system quite normal. But what could it possibly have been but an hallucination? Mrs. MacDougall, let us discuss some of the minor points of your statement about this girl, Anne. Oh. So now Anne's an enemy agent too, hmm? Well, she happens to be from Omaha, Nebraska, which I understand is still in Allied hands. Mrs. MacDougall, we lost almost 6,000 men in that raid. Now, tell me about Anne. I'd corresponded with Anne for years. One of those hen pal things that start in school and just go on and on. Finally, she was able to afford a European holiday. And in May of 1939, I rented a little house in France, near Loire. Beautiful little house, not a hundred yards from the sea. First, I thought it was the sea. shape no time at all. Come on. Take your mind off your troubles. Did you ever see such a bloody mess? Over the ships, the planes. How could so many things go wrong? Hitler will dance a jig when he hears how we watch this one. He'll make August 12th a national holiday. Free beer and pretzels for everyone. <laughs> Hang on. The doctor will be here any second. Answer me. 
Why don't you answer me? Sergeant. Sir? If the doctor shouldn't come in time. Now, now don't talk like that. darling everything's all right oh come on now calm down did you have a bad dream well, it's only thunder dear there goes our picnic it's an awful dream there was a battle and they brought this man in and he was so badly hurt and as he was dying, he called my name. Emily, I love you. Darling, I thought a librarian was just supposed to dust the books, not read them. The hero dying in battle with the name of his beloved on his lips, just like a romantic novel. It's not funny, but it was only a dream. It didn't seem like a dream. Dreams never do. Now look, we only have a few days left in France and we're going to have fun. You'll be back in that musty library soon enough. It didn't seem like a dream. Now you go back to sleep, darling. seem like a dream at all. I'm sorry. Eight books are the maximum. But I need every one of them. And ten more beside to tell the truth. I'm sorry. But don't keep saying you're sorry. I, I need the books. I'm sorry. What is it? Hello? Feeling better? Oh, no. No! No! No, no. Please don't faint again. This is terrible. Just terrible. I, I shouldn't have run from the library when you fainted, but, but nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I, uh, well, I made a girl blush once, but, well, everybody in town could make her blush. That was no accomplishment. Doctor said I fainted because I'm coming down with influenza. I'm glad. I mean, um, I'm glad because it wasn't because of me. Uh, well, um, your name was on the nameplate on your desk, so I, uh, looked up the address in the directory. Well, better stay in bed and drink plenty of tea. A drop of whiskey wouldn't hurt either. Bye. Sir? Uh, I'm terribly confused. Oh? Uh, about what? Have I seen you before? Well, I came down from Dorky. It's a little town six miles from Glasgow. And, um... I went to Liverpool when I was six years old for my elder sister's wedding. I'm sure we didn't meet there. But it really was you. And you said my name. I did. I don't have influenza. And I don't faint when a man looks at me. Good. 
And I'm not a neurotic or a hysteric or anything like that. Jolly good. I did dream about you. It was a terrible dream. Oh, I apologize. You're making fun of me. No, 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 I'm not. Really, I'm very sympathetic. You were laughing at me. No, really. Go away. I'm not laughing at you, miss. Uh, really, I'm not. You see, I'm, I'm a bit confused, too. Well, no one's ever dreamed of me before. I mean, no one not related to me. Uh, and fainting besides. Well, it shakes you up a bit. I know. Yeah. Well, perhaps you dream of someone else. Someone who looks like me. Well, that's very possible. I mean, I've got a very ordinary face. You have not. You've a marvelous face. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I really haven't, you know. My ears are monstrous, and my, my eyes don't match. The left one's just a wee bit cockeyed. And, uh, oh, yes, I have extremely weak chin. It's a family characteristic. Won't you have some tea? Oh, yes. I, I'd love to. You know, uh, we talk like characters in one of those silly comedies where the audience laughs and, and eats chocolates, and, and everyone knows it's going to turn out all right. But it doesn't turn out all right. Oh, no. Oh, no. A creature had a dream. Ate a bit of cheese before dozing off and had a dream. So it can't be. <laughs> what nonsense. How do we know it's nonsense? How do we know it isn't? Some of it is true. In the dream, I married you. And now you've asked me. Don't you see? And if in real life we don't marry, is that how we somehow defeat fate? You're making fun of me. All right, all right. I was badly wounded. You were dying. How do you know? Did you see me die? No, not exactly. Do you know I haven't had one single childhood disease? Not even the measles? What makes it so sure I'm going to die that easily? How do you know I won't die in my own bed at the age of 97, surrounded by six generations of loved ones? Oh, Harry! No! We're not going to meet tomorrow night or the night after or ever. I'm all through batting my head against the stone wall of your superstitious mumbo-jumbo. For the future, I wish you nothing but pleasant dreams. In, in, uh, in that dream or whatever it was, I was wounded in a war? Yes, of course. About the same age as I am now? Yes. What war? Thank you, my good man. Marry me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Huh? Hmm. And I don't see why, if Following our plan, in the next two months, we could... There's nothing to worry about. Just an alert. First day of war is always the worst. Emily, darling. In about a month from now, Adolf will be on his bony knees, begging our pardon. Can't you just hear the dear chap explaining the whole thing was a, a slight misunderstanding? Look, if you're at all worried, we'll go down to the basement. I, I suppose it is safer down there. We're safe here. Well, of course we are. It doesn't happen here. 
It happens near Point Loise, in France. Emily. Emily. It's already past August 12th, so it won't happen this year. Please, darling. Is it next August 12th? Perhaps even the August 12th after that? Do you think we might have two years? Could we possibly be that lucky? Could we, Harry? Could we? Emily. I love you. Dear Anne, I am approaching another August 12th. But unlike the agony of last year, when Harry's unit was stationed here in England, this year my darling is in Alexandria, Egypt. 5,000 long, long miles from that house near Point Loise. Hello. Yes, it's me. It's really me. They flew a company of us back for special training at a camp nearby. Very hush-hush. But I'll tell you one thing. There's going to be plenty of long weekend leaves. Well, aren't you even a tiny bit glad to see me? Oh, Harry. So, it's to be this August 12th. Yes, I'm right here. I woke up. You were there. I thought you'd gone without saying goodbye. Now, would I do a thing like that? I really wouldn't blame you. I've made our weekend here so miserable. Why are you up so early? Hmm? Oh, couldn't sleep. Why? No reason. How long have you been awake? I don't know. It's almost five. I'd best start breakfast. Emily. Yes? You know, in, in that dream of yours, uh, I was a captain, wasn't I? That's right. Thank heaven you're just a lieutenant. If some things are wrong, maybe everything's wrong. Yes. Also, uh, where was that landing to take place again? Oh, now, don't look so serious. What is it, Harry? Nothing. Well, after all, it's such a spectacular dream, I like to check up on it from time to time. Just to keep the facts straight. You know the dream as well as I. You know its point was. We're going to land in Norway. What? Somewhere near Bergen. Darling. Sometime in November. Is that true? Well, of course. Why didn't you tell me before? I can get court martial for even telling you now. Harry, if you ever lied to me about this... I wouldn't. Yes, you would. All right. On some distant August 12th, when GHQ says, after Point Wires, boys, I shall instantly phone you and say, guess what? What good would that do? If you didn't tell me the truth, I'd never forgive you. Even if my dream were insane, and you came back, or if you die of your wounds. Until I died, I wouldn't forgive you. Forgive me for what? Sparing you senseless worry? Denying us one honest moment before we said goodbye. Why, you sentimental little... I mean it, Harry. Point was... What? Oh, nothing.
almost there. Harry, instead of staying at home, next Friday, why don't we drive down to Henley on the Thames and have a picnic? Harry? Yes, darling? Did you hear what I said? Oh, yes, darling. What is it, Harry? You meant what you said before, didn't you? About what? But if I lied to you, you would never forgive me. Well, it's going to be in newspapers anyhow afterwards, so... And you're such an unpredictable little character, you might actually hate me for the rest of your life. It is France. And we are landing August 12th. But I'll come back to you, Emily. I will. No, no, no! Welcome back. You had a motor accident. You're in St. Martin's Hospital. Was my husband hurt? Just a few scratches, that's all. Now, you must try and get some rest. It's been quite an ordeal. You know, you've been unconscious for almost a week. What day is this? Tuesday. I mean the date. August the 17th. Doctor, will you please tell this soldier that it's pointless to sit in the hall day after day? Harry! Darling! You told me they couldn't kill you so easily. You were right! Oh, you must go right. back to bed at once. Harry's dead, isn't he? Please, you must go back to bed at once. A shock like this might kill you. It's all right, Doctor. I've been expecting this man. For years. And you expect me to believe that the knowledge of this raid was a dream, an accident in time? Believe what you wish. Mrs. MacDougall, I deal in facts. And the only fact I have is that you were in hospital, unconscious, in a delirium. And in that delirious state, you mentioned again and again the exact time and place of a raid that was yet to take place. He's dead now, poor chap, and you can't hurt him anymore with the truth. Did he mention the raid beforehand to you? Why won't you believe me? And so what did Emily's psychic experience really prove? That fate can't be changed no matter what? Yes, I suppose so. But if Emily had had a second chance, aren't you absolutely certain she would have chosen the dream and those few sweet years with Harry? What about Harry McDougall? What would he have chosen? Exactly what he did choose, of course. Because isn't that the whole point about fate? That given any number of second chances, they would always have done exactly what they did do. It would still and always end exactly the same way. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience. Man's adventure in the world of the unknown. That mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond. <laughs>